What if Goku Black lost control of Goku's body? This is an idea I had while watching Jujutsu Kaiser and seeing Ghetto's body slightly fight back against Kenjaku. But that was just where I got the basic idea. The way I'm going to go about it is vastly different. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and please do subscribe. It is free and you can always unsubscribe later. You can join my Discord server to talk to me and my community along with getting notified whenever I upload. You can join the Discord through the link in the description of the video. Anyways, with that out of the way, my name is Sacred Saiyan, and let's get into the video. For this what if to take place, I'm going to begin with making a slight alteration to Zamasu's wish on the Super Dragon Balls. Instead of him wishing to swap his body with the body of the Saiyan Goku, he wishes to take over the body of the Saiyan Goku. And it is this minor difference which will create a butterfly effect of other changes as well, which we will see later on. So, Zamasu makes his wish, and while his body goes limp in space, on Earth, Zamasu's soul invades the body of Goku, claiming the body for himself, and Zamasu would look at his hands, seeing the wish worked. Goten asks if his dad is okay, but Goku Black laughs, and without saying a word, creates a keyblade and cuts Goten down, and shortly after, Chi Chi arrives, and he cuts her down as well. Goku Black would begin laughing, but strangely, he also begins to cry at the same time. Zamasu is confused, but just assumes that they are tears of joy as he can finally enact the Zero Mortal plan. However, that may not be the case. We now skip ahead some time, events playing out in basically the same way up until Goku Black has future Bulma by the throat and is about to kill her. Goku Black is about to deal the final blow, but then, out of nowhere, he begins to strangle himself, dropping Bulma, and Trunks quickly jumps in and grabs her before fleeing. Goku Black is then able to control himself again, and is confused and angered. What just happened? Was that a technique of Trunks? But Goku Black recollects his thoughts and chases after the pair. However, fortunately, both future Trunks and future Bulma are able to escape to the past. With this, you can see things are already starting to change. And once future Bulma and future Trunks wake up in the past, and Trunks tries and fails to attack Goku, both Bulma and Trunks explain what's been going on in the future. And while they're in the middle of doing this, Goku Black arrives and has his confrontation with Goku. The pair trading blows, and eventually, the fight stops as Goku Black begins being sucked back into the future, destroying the time machine like normal before he's fully dragged back. After this, Whis and Beerus would be suspicious after seeing the time ring and Goku's black key feeling similar to that of Zamasu. And future Bulma would actually add that there was something strange she noticed about Goku Black when he was about to kill her, which he could have very easily done. It's like his body fought back and stopped him, almost like he isn't in full control of the body. Either way, Goku goes with Beerus and Whis to check out Zamasu, while future Bulma helps present Bulma repair Cell's time machine. And then, once everything is settled, future Bulma obviously stays in the past for her safety, while Trunks, Vegeta and Goku head to the future. Things from here play out like normal, up until Goku Black explains to Goku how he stole his body, and how he killed Goten and Chi Chi, but this time, it isn't just tears that confuse Goku Black. Goku Black blinks, and he's in a black void. But not just that, Zamasu is in his own body again. Zamasu then looks around, and he sees one thing in the void, a cage. Zamasu walks towards the cage, but then, he has a confused look, the cage. There's a hole in it. Whoever was inside must have broken out. Zamasu is then paralyzed with fear, as he senses someone behind him, turning around as Goku is standing there. <laughs> Staring with an aura of anger, Zamasu then blinks again, and he's back in the real world as Goku Black once more. Before Goku Black can think about what just happened, Goku rages out and begins to pummel Goku Black and Zamasu. Goku Black eventually regaining the edge however, and beating Goku. And things go on to remain similar again, but every so often, Goku Black gets paralysed in the air, seemingly without reason, allowing an attack to be landed on him, which wouldn't have prior. Or, 
He'll throw an attack at himself, which puts him off his rhythm, eventually. Once Zamasu is almost sealed in the Muffy Bar, and Goku Black appears next to him to save him, Goku Black collapses to the ground, screaming in pain. Zamasu asks what's wrong, and Goku Black says that his body is rejecting him. Zamasu quickly tells him they should fuse into one, and Goku Black agrees, the pair merging into one, and seemingly, the pain stops. This fusion leads to Vegeta and Goku only having one option, they need to fuse as well. But remember what I said earlier, all these minor changes have a butterfly effect, and this time, when the Supreme Kai offers to give them the Patara, Goku says he has a better idea. They know that the Patara will run out for them, and they don't know how quickly, and plus, they should prove a point to Zamasu. Vegeta would ask Goku what he is going on about, and Goku says that they should perform the fusion dance. Vegeta is first opposed, but eventually is convinced to do it. So, Goku shows Vegeta how to do the dance, and out of sheer luck, and a bit of plot convenience, they are able to do the dance perfectly first try. Meaning, Gogeta is born. Zamasu is disgusted, the mortals imitating the gods again, but this time, with their inferior form of fusion. Gogeta then powers up to Super Saiyan Blue and begins fighting against Merge Zamasu. And Gogeta is absolutely dominating the Kai. And he isn't going to run out as fast as Vegito. But then Gogeta notices something. Zamasu is no longer throwing any punches. So Gogeta stops his attack and he just sees Zamasu standing there. And Gogeta had the confused expression on his face. But then remembers what future Bulma said about Goku's black body fighting back, and he thinks back to Goku Black randomly freezing and hitting himself. And then, what Goku Black said just before fusing, his body is rejecting him. Gogeta then gets an idea, powering up an attack, and inside merged Zamasu's mind, Goku is fighting against both Zamasus at once, both of them shouting for Goku to be gone, and Goku shouts for them to get out of his body. Back in the real world, Gogeta has finally finished powering up his attack, the Soul Punisher. Gogeta then throws the attack, and at the same time the attack hits Merge Zamasu inside of the real world, Goku lands a punch on both Zamasus in the Mindscape. And then, we cut back to the real world, and Gogeta defuses, and both Goku and Vegeta look to where Merge Zamasu was standing, seeing Goku Black standing as the smoke dissipates. Goku and Vegeta then both get in their fighting stances, believing their plan didn't work, but then a beam of light covers Goku Black, and once it fades, the colour of his outfit changed to that of Goku's traditional colour scheme. Future Goku has now regained control of his body, and he makes that clear to Goku and Vegeta. Goku begins laughing, telling Vegeta their plan worked, and Vegeta tells future Goku that it took him long enough but having a slight smirk on his face while saying this. Future Goku then looks at Trunks. He is so sorry. He was locked in his own mind, and he saw everything. He tried to stop Zamasu, but he just couldn't. Trunks says that it wasn't his fault, but he still can't look at Future Goku in the eyes. Even if it wasn't Goku that chose to do what he did, it was still that body that caused so much destruction. The group would then return to the past, explaining what happened, and future Goku and future Bulma would both look at each other. Future Goku crying, and future Bulma runs and hugs him. All she can say is thank you. If it wasn't for him fighting like he did against Zamasu, she would have been killed. Future Goku then sees Chi Chi and Goten, but he is speechless. And then, Wee steps in, saying that future Goku has only two options. He can either go to Trunks' timeline, or remain in this one. He can't take Goku back to his original timeline, as there has been enough time travel going on, and they can't risk the creation of another time ring. That, and Lord Beerus, strictly forbade it. Future Bulma says that he should stay here. Everyone in the future will never see him as anything other than Goku Black. In this timeline, he can be happy. Future Trunks agrees, and nobody has an issue with this, so future Goku agrees to stay in the present, and with that, everyone says their goodbyes to Bulma and Trunks, as they head back 
to the future, this time fortunately not being erased by future Zeno. So now, there is the question of where future Goku will stay. Present Goku offers for him to come live with him, Chi Chi and Goten, but future Goku kindly refuses the offer. He'd just feel out of place, and it would probably make things quite awkward. Bulma then says, he can live at Capsule Corp instead. They have a huge facility anyway, and then Vegeta has a sparring partner for whenever they are on Earth too. Future Goku would accept Bulma's offer, and Bulma would then show Future Goku to his new room. And a short time later, Future Goku walks out in a new outfit. Even with him changing the colour of that gi, he still felt disgusted wearing the same outfit as Goku Black. But now, he has a new gi, symbolising a change in this Future Goku, along with making it easier to distinguish him from the present Goku. And Beerus looks at Future Goku, getting an idea but he'll wait a while before doing anything. He's tired and wants to take a nap. But with that, we are going to end off this part. This view begins on Beerus's planet. Both Gokus are having an intense sparring match, but present Goku is pushed to the point of transforming, powering up into Super Saiyan Blue, and he asks if his future counterpart is going to do the same. However, he refuses. He hasn't transformed since he regained control of this body. And that's because, even though Zamasu's soul was erased, his memories, abilities, ki and power all remained. And future Goku doesn't want to use that power. Present Goku is upset. He never gets to fight the future him at full power. And this makes him remember the tournament Zeno was on about between all of the universes. Maybe then, he can have some awesome fights. And he may even push his future self to go all out. So, once this sparring match is finished, Beerus calls over future Goku, and as he walks over to Beerus, and begins a conversation with him, present Goku pulls out the Zeno button, and goes to Zeno, to start the tournament of power, while nobody is looking. Future Goku asks Beerus why he wants to talk to him, and Beerus responds by asking if Goku feels guilt for the sins of Zamasu. Goku says he does, and Beerus asks why. It wasn't Goku's choice to commit those actions. Goku says that it doesn't matter. It was his body, and therefore, his responsibility. He wasn't strong enough to take back control from Zamasu sooner, and therefore, the actions of Zamasu are his fault. Beerus gets slightly annoyed by this response, and Goku has a look of confusion. Beerus tells Goku that he needs to let go of his regret. Instead, he can use it to fuel his rage and power, and he can use that to fuel the power of destruction. Future Goku is about to respond, but then, present Goku appears back, and he runs over to the pair, and tells them about the tournament of power. Beerus being furious at Goku for getting them into this, and future Goku is excited for the challenge, but once he hears about the losing universes being erased, future Goku's guilt comes to the surface once again, as he doesn't want to be the cause of more people's deaths. But regardless, the team is created like usual, with future Goku taking the place of Freezer, as that was the last spot to be filled, and Freezer was only chosen since he had no other viable option. With that, we head to the Tournament of Power, and immediately, those from the Tournament of Destroyers, like Karpa and Hit, are shocked to see that there is another Goku, and once they hear the explanation, Champa is outraged, saying Universe 7 is cheating. They just took another version of their strongest member, from another timeline. However, Zeno doesn't care. He thinks there being another Goku will make things even more fun. So Champa quickly quiets down, and Beerus begins to laugh at his brother. Gowasu overhears everything as well, and sees future Goku. He knows these aren't exactly the best circumstances, but he is glad that he was able to recover from Zamasu's evil deeds. Anyways, now the tournament commences, everyone goes off and do their usual things, but future Goku is quickly confronted by Toppo. Although Toppo called the present Goku a villain, this Goku actually does have the blood of the innocent on his hands, even if not by his own choice. Future Goku heard about the strength of Toppo. This is going to be a difficult fight, especially due to the fact that he is reluctant to transform. And future Goku is absolutely right. Although his base form is stronger than that of his present counterpart, it is not so much stronger that he is able to combat Toppo. But Goku can't keep limiting his power and techniques. The fight goes on, and Toppo begins pummeling future Goku, 
spouting his usual speeches about justice. And Beerus shouts for future Goku to stop holding back. If he cares so much about the innocent dying, then how is he going to feel when everyone in Universe 7 dies because of his stupid moral objection to using the power that is now his own? Future Goku's eyes widen. Beerus is right. He's been too busy thinking about what will happen to the other universes. He didn't even consider what would happen to his own. And he can't be the reason for his loved ones dying yet again. Topo is about to punch future Goku in the face, but suddenly a block of Kachin appears in his way, blocking Topo's blow. And once Topo smacks the block of Kachin away, he sees future Goku standing there in Super Saiyan Rose. But future Goku didn't only get a Super Saiyan Rose app. This was an awakening for Goku, allowing him to tap into all the power and technique he was suppressing, not just of Goku Black, but of merged Zamasu as a whole, since that was the body he resided in prior to Gogeta's Soul Punisher, which removed all the evil from it. Topo has a shocked expression on his face, as future Goku then kicks Topo in the stomach, blowing the wind out of him, and he then lands a punch on Topo's face, which sends him a short distance away. Just after this happens, present Goku asks his team for their energy in order to use a spirit bomb. Future Goku obviously giving him some energy, and this leads to the first awakening of Ultra Instinct. And this shocks Future Goku. Can he attain that power as well? Surely he can. That's literally a past version of himself. However, he can't dwell on it for too long, as he still has to deal with Toppo, and Toppo is furious. He will not lose to this villain. He doesn't care about his morals anymore. He shall prevail. Topo awakens his destroyer transformation, and Belmont smirks, with Beerus being angry. He wanted to teach future Goku to do that, but he didn't get around to it yet. His laziness got the better of them. Topo then rushes at future Goku, and Goku is forced to dodge, not wanting to come into contact with the aura of Hakai, which surrounds Topo. But he quickly gets an idea, creating a key scythe, much like Goku Black, and he slashes Toppo with it, cutting through the aura of destruction and leaving a wound on Toppo. Future Goku far surpassed Toppo in terms of strength. It was only the aura of destruction that was causing an issue. However, Goku has now found a solution to that problem. Toppo quickly jumps back, putting his hands together as he begins to form a giant ball of Hakai. He will not lose. Future Goku powers up a Rose Kamehameha in response. And the moment Toppo fires his ball of destruction, future Goku fires his Kamehameha, the two attacks clashing with a ferocious intensity. The sheer pressure of these attacks colliding, sending many contestants flying out of the ring. And if Goku doesn't stop that ball of Hakai, a lot more of them will get knocked out too, since that'll at least erase half of the ring. Future Goku then taps more into the power he has been holding back, shouting FULL POWER! as his beam grows twice in size, and Toppo's ball of destruction then shatters, and Toppo is hit head-on by the Kamehameha, resulting in him being sent flying out of the ring and heavily injured as he appears in the stands. Future Goku reverts to his base form, smiling as he feels like a weight has been lifted off of his shoulders, then turning to Beerus in the stands and giving him a thumbs up. Beerus looks down and smiles, muttering under his breath, not bad. Future Goku then goes off, having some other minor fights against some low level opponents. But his next big fight is when he sees Vegeta and Goku jumping Jiren, along with Android 17, and he decides to get in on the action as well. With the addition of Future Goku, who was the strongest opponent there, Jiren has to release much more power than in the original, leading to the attack which 17 sacrifices himself to block, just like normal. But now, even though present Goku and Vegeta are laying on the ground with practically no energy, future Goku still has a lot left in him, and he still has some more techniques he wants to try out. So now, future Goku and Jiren have a one-on-one, -on -one, Goku utilising the Kai Kai to keep teleporting around him and hitting Jiren, being much more efficient than the instant transmission, since he doesn't need to waste any movement to teleport. But eventually, Jiren stops falling for this strategy, and is about to punch future Goku in the face, but future Goku jumps on top of Jiren's fist, then backflipping away, and creating a key scythe once more, which he slashes in the direction of Jiren, creating a key slash, which heads straight for him. But Jiren is able to dodge. However, 
This is exactly what future Goku is hoping for, as a key slash then turns into a rift, and 20 clones of future Goku come flying out of it, all in Super Saiyan Rose, and they all begin ganging up on Jiren. Future Goku was already a strong opponent by himself, but now, with Jiren having to fight 20 of them at the same time, he has no choice but to stop holding back. A clone of future Goku would hit Jiren in the face, but Jiren would then grab the clone's arm before firing a point-blank blast at the clone's chest, completely destroying it. Another two clones would then fly towards Jiren, but he would grab them both by the face, slamming them into the ground, and they disappear as well. This cycle would continue, with Jiren taking out each and every one of the clones, until eventually none of them remain, and he would then look around to find the original, and he would see future Goku healing both present Goku and Vegeta. They didn't gain much energy from this, but at least all of their injuries were healed, and they did both gain minor Zenkai boosts. Future Goku then sees a bit of rubble move a short distance away, deciding to check it out, so as Jiren is about to attack him from behind, <laughs> he Kai Kai's away, and both Goku and Vegeta, only in their base forms, try to take on Jiren once again. But even with their wounds healed, they are still no match for the Pride Trooper. After a short scuffle, Vegeta gets slapped away by Jiren falling off of the ring, so he gives Goku the last of his energy, but just before he gets eliminated, future Goku Kai Kai's next to him, and quickly grabs him, before using the Kai Kai once again, to get back onto the ring, Vegeta being shocked, as he sees Android 17 standing in front of him, future Goku smiles, saying it turned out, that the moving rubble was due to 17, and Goku has been healing him up, while Vegeta, along with his present counterpart, took on Jiren, but now, he thinks they won't be able to intervene with what happens next. Vegeta asking why, and he then sees a giant white beam of light where he was just moments ago. Present Goku has unlocked Ultra Instinct once again, and is now pushing up an even better fight against Jiren than he did in canon, due to the Zenkai boost he got from being healed by future Goku. However, the fight between Ultra Instinct Goku and Jiren doesn't really change. Goku eventually attains Mastered Ultra Instinct, and Jiren eventually breaks his limits, leading to an epic fight which ends with Goku's body giving up on him. But this time, when Jiren nearly knocks Goku out of the ring, future Goku Kai Kai's next to present Goku, and saves him, slightly healing him, while Vegeta and 17 fight Jiren. Vegeta regaining enough energy to be in Super Saiyan 2, and even though Jiren does begin to overpower them, both Gokus jump back into the fight, and with that, the battle goes in their favour, and ends with Vegeta and present Goku, who turns Super Saiyan at the last moment, pushing Jiren out of the ring, along with themselves, resulting in the tournament coming to an end, and future Goku is crowned as the MVP. With this, the Grand Priest asks what he would like to wish for with the Super Dragon Balls, and future Goku makes the obvious choice to bring back all the other universes, being a sort of redemption in a way. His body was used to kill so many, but it was now used to save so many more. This especially being the case, since if he didn't make this wish, every universe that was still alive, including the ones not in the Tournament of Power, would have also got erased. But with that, everyone returns home, and Goku, now taking Beerus' advice to heart, decides to train under Beerus. But we'll see the fruits of that training in the next part. And this video begins some time after the Tournament of Power. It is around this time where Chi Lai and Lemo would find Broly and Paragus on Vompa, since Freeze was trying to find some strong soldiers. However, in this timeline, Freezer isn't alive, so Chi Lai and Lemo never find Broly. However, somebody does. On Vampa, Broly is fighting a giant bug with Paragus watching a short distance away. And then, Paragus is shocked, as he sees a ship in the sky. Paragus calls for Broly, and the pair run to where the ship landed. Once they arrive, the ship doors open, and Kula steps out, with a giant smirk on his face. Finally, he may have found a suitable punching bag. We aren't going to see these characters for a while, as they won't be heading to Earth when Freezer does originally, 
So, we're going to head to the events of the Moro arc. Also, to make things simpler, instead of referring to the present timeline Goku as present Goku and the Goku whose body was stolen by Zamasu as future Goku, from here, I'll just be calling the Goku from the present timeline Goku and the other version of Goku, I'll be calling Kakarot. But just know that any time I say Kakarot, other characters in the series will still be calling him Goku. Well, besides Vegeta, since he just calls Goku Kakarot anyway. But anyway, now we are at the Moro arc, and Goku and Vegeta still meet up with the Galactic Patrol and head to Namek in order to confront Moro. Kakarot will not be joining them here, as Beerus wants him to continue his training, which means events play out the same, and Vegeta heads to Yardrat to do his training, while Goku begins training with Merus to utilise Ultra Instinct. And while they are both doing their own training, Kakarot continues his training with Beerus, and both him and Beerus believe that Kakarot is on the cusp of something. He just needs a push. From here, things play out the same, until Whis, Beerus, Merus and Kakarot are all watching the battle against Moro, and Moro is winning. And it doesn't look like the Z Fighters are going to be able to overcome him. It's at this time, Merus and Kakarot want to head to Earth to help them. Kakarot Kaikai's the Capsule Corp. He would have teleported right next to the Z Fighters, but Moro created a barrier around the area, which prevented him from doing so. Merus then begins flying over to the battlefield, and Kakarot is about to do the same, but Chi Chi and Goten then run out, and ask Kakarot what is going on. Kakarot is about to explain, but he then looks in the air and sees a ship coming into land. Kakarot then tells Chi Chi and Goten to stay back as the ship then lands in front of them, and Kula, Broly, and Paragus all step out of the ship. Kakarot is confused. Are those Saiyans? And why does the person they are with look like Frieza? Kula then introduces himself. He is the older brother of Freezer, and he's looking for the Saiyan who killed him. Kakarot says that he's looking at him, but unless Kula wants to end up like his brother, he'll leave now. Kakarot has more important things to deal with right now. Kula laughs, saying that there is nothing in the universe more important than himself, and he'll leave this planet once Kakarot is dead of course. Kula then tells Broly to attack, Broly rushing towards Kakarot, and Kakarot dodges two punches before kicking Broly into the air. He can't keep the fight close to the ground, or they might destroy the surrounding area. Kakarot and Broly begin trading blows, Kakarot being impressed with Broly's strength as he begins overpowering his base form. Kakarot knows he needs to finish this quickly, so he powers up to Super Saiyan Rose and begins pummeling Broly, but he's tougher than Kakarot for. He just won't go down. Broly then gets enraged due to the constant assault and powers up into Akari, evening the playing field as him and Kakarot go blow for blow, and Paragus is about to activate Broly's collar, but Kula shoots a death beam through his back. He no longer has a use for the elderly Saiyan. Kakarot and Broly continue fighting, and Kakarot asks Broly why he is doing this. He can sense he isn't a bad person. Broly just growls at Kakarot, and Kakarot then sees the collar on Broly's throat. So, that's it. Kakarot is about to throw an attack to break Broly's collar, but both him and Broly then hear a scream, both of them looking to the ground, and they see Kula grabbing Goten by the throat, and Chi Chi is hitting him, shouting for him to let go. Broly's eyes then widen, as he sees his father's lifeless body on the floor, and at the same time, Kula shoots a death beam through Chi Chi's chest, and then does the same to Goten. Kakarot's eyes widen, getting flashbacks of when Zamasu killed his Chi Chi and Goten. He's reliving that moment. Over and over and over again. He watched them die again. He wasn't strong enough to save them again. Both Kakarot and Broly then become enraged and have awakenings. Broly awakening Super Saiyan, while Kakarot awakens Ultra Ego. However, those two aren't the only ones to have an awakening. At the exact same time, Goku on the battlefield against Moro awakens Perfected Ultra Instinct. That's right. We have a triple, simultaneous, Saiyan awakening. And while Goku begins to decimate Moro, Kakarot and Broly clash once more, shattering dimensions 
with every single blow. Kakarot doesn't want to fight Broly, but Broly is out of control, so he has to put him down. But Broly just keeps growing in power, his hair even turning green. However, Broly isn't the only one growing in power. Ultra Ego makes it so that Kakarot gains strength every time Broly damages him. And Kakarot actually kept the immortality from Merge Zamasu, which means that every time Broly hits Kakarot, not only does he gain strength, but also heals the damage done to him, quite literally removing one of, if not the only downside of Ultra Ego. That being, if you take too much damage, you'll detransform. This means that Kakarot and Broly are actually gaining strength at the same rate. However, the difference is Broly is accumulating damage, while Kakarot isn't. And eventually, Kakarot uses one of the abilities he gained from Merge Thumasu, the ability to create portals. And as Broly charges at Kakarot to punch him, Kakarot creates a portal in front of him, with Broly rushing straight through it and appearing on Vampa. Kakarot just sends throughout the universe to find a planet which has remnants of Broly's key. And since Vampa was his home for so long, that's where he ended up. Kakarot then looks down to Kula. Kula smirking as he powers up into his golden form. It was Kula's plan to have Broly weaken Kakarot, and he would then be able to finish him off with ease. However, Kula wasn't aware of Kakarot's immortality, and that was his fatal mistake. Kakarot Kai Kai is in front of Kula, Kula reacting and throwing a punch. The Goofy takes the punch head on and then kicks Kula in the chest, sending him flying, nearly crashing into the Capsule Court building. But Kakarot then creates a portal behind Kula and another portal in a wasteland, leading to Kula crashing into a mountain. Kakarot then Kai Kai's to the wasteland. As Kula gets out of the mountain and the pair are about to continue their fight, but they both feel strange, like their energy is being drained. Moro's head then comes out of the planet, right behind Kakarot. Moro has now merged with the planet, and he senses these other strong warriors clashing against each other. But wait a minute, why does one of them look like the Saiyan? He was just fighting. No matter. Moro then powers up a mouth beam, which he fires towards Kakarot. But Kakarot creates a ball of Akai in his hand, and aims it at the beam. The beam being completely erased after making contact with the ball of Hakai. And as Kakarot is then about to rush at Moro, Moro's head goes back into the earth and appears back on the battlefield against Ultra Instinct Goku. Back to the fight with Kakarot and Kula, they begin trading blows, but Kakarot is just taking his time with Kula. He wants him to feel the pain that he has caused. Kula throws a punch, but Kakarot blocks and then retaliates with three punches of his own. Kula shoots a death beam, but Kakarot just allows it to hit him healing the damage and growing stronger. Kula doesn't understand it. Why won't Kakarot just die? But Kakarot has had enough of this, blitzing in front of Kula and outstretching an arm. Kula then looks terrified as Kakarot says the one word which means certain death. Hakai. And as Kula gets erased, on the other battlefield, Goku finishes off Moro by landing the final blow on the crystal in his head. And with that, both battles came to an end. Kakarot would revert to his base form and quickly gather the Dragon Balls, reviving Chi Chi and Goten and pulling them into a hug, crying as he apologises for not saving them. And a short time later, Kakarot would Kai Kai to Vampa, finding Broly who's calmed down and he would bring Broly to Beerus' planet in order to teach him to control his anger. On Beerus' planet, they would meet up with Goku and Vegeta, and once Kakarot shows off Ultra Ego and explains the power of Broly, Vegeta is annoyed. Both Goku and Kakarot are so far ahead, and apparently this Broly guy is as well. He needs to find his own way of gaining power in order to surpass all of them. But we're going to find out what way that is in the next part. This video begins on Beerus' planet. Broly and Vegeta are watching on alongside Beerus and Whis as Kakarot and Goku commence a sparring match. The pair both know Kakarot is a clear superior in terms of their base states, but that isn't what they are here to test. They are there to see who is stronger at maximum power. So, while Goku powers up into perfected Ultra Instinct and Kakarot powers up into Ultra Ego, the pair blitz towards each other. Kakarot throwing a punch which Goku evades, and Goku countering with a punch, 
which gets blocked by Kakarot. The pair then jump back, both of them smirking, as they blitz towards each other once again, and both Beerus and Whis watch with great anticipation, wanting to see which one of their students is stronger. Broly watches on in amazement. He can't believe how strong these guys are, and with Kakarot taking a sort of mental role for Broly, Broly watches on to see how strong his master truly is. Vegeta, on the other hand, is frustrated with his own weakness. He still hasn't found a way to keep up. No new godly transformation like Kakarot or Goku. No legendary power like Broly. It hurts his pride as a Saiyan Prince. But then, Vegeta actually gets an idea. He is the Prince of all Saiyans. So why not return to his Saiyan roots, even if temporarily? Maybe he can find a way to access his Great Ape transformation once more and use that in some way. He'll have to speak with Bulma to see if that's possible. Anyway, the battle between Kakarot and Goku continues. Kakarot clearly does have an edge in power, but he just can't overcome the evasive speed of Ultra Instinct. And Goku is able to land blows on Kakarot, but all they do is make the gap in power between the two even wider, and Kakarot fully recovers from them. Kakarot keeps on throwing attacks, Goku continuing to dodge, but each blow gets slightly closer to connecting starting to graze Goku, and then Kakarot throws a punch at Goku's face, and it hits, sending Goku flying, and Kakarot chases after him, throwing a flurry of attacks before slamming Goku into the ground with a thunderous kick, making Goku revert back to base form. Goku gets back up, transforming back into Perfection Ultra Instinct, and saying Kakarot is crazy strong, but he's not done yet. Whis however interjects, saying they've seen enough for now, and Lord Beerus doesn't want more of his planet destroyed. Kakarot and Goku looking around and seeing the damage they caused, the both revert to base form, apologising for the damage, and while Kakarot and Goku go and talk to Beerus and Broly, Vegeta walks over to Whis, and he would ask him to be taken back to Earth. Whis asking why, and Vegeta says he needs to explore some other paths of training, and he may return once he has, but he isn't benefiting as much from the training here as the others. We says very well, taking Vegeta back to Earth, and once Vegeta is there, he goes to Bulma to figure out any way to access Grey Tape without his tail. And after some thinking, Bulma comes up with the Blood Wave machine, allowing Vegeta to transform into Grey Tape. And thankfully, he still has perfect control over it. After this test, Vegeta will begin training and experimenting with the use of the Blood Wave machine, seeing if he can find a way to evolve with a Saiyan power. Maybe he can combine Super Saiyan with Great Ape, like they did with Super Saiyan God, but only time will tell, and we'll see the fruits of his training later on. The Granola Arc doesn't take place, since Freezer was never revived, which means we're going to skip ahead all the way to the superhero movie. Things start out the same, however, the Red Ribbon Army have much more data than usual. Due to some of the events, which have transpired on Earth, and this time, when Piccolo gets Bulma to try call Whis, Kakarot and Broly are having a sparring match, so they can't get their help, but fortunately, Vegeta is still on Earth, due to his training, but he doesn't really care about some human army, so if those androids show up again, then he'll step in, but otherwise, he'll just continue his training. So, things play out similar for a while, Piccolo still wanting to help Gohan reawaken his power, so he still fakes the kidnapping of Pan, but this time, when Gohan heads to the Red Ribbon Army base and reawakens his ultimate power, Vegeta senses it and arrives at the scene, watching Gohan and Piccolo take on the Gammas and deciding he'll step in if one of them gets defeated. As they can't take on Gohan or Piccolo, they aren't worth him testing his new power on. However, very shortly, he'll meet an opponent to test that power. You see, Vegeta still being on Earth was noted by the Red Ribbon Army, and for that reason, they put greater focus on the creation of Cell Max, meaning he's actually fully ready to be released, and far more powerful and optimised than the canon Cell Max. So, once he is released, he's no longer a mindless giant. He instead looks far more similar to Perfect Cell, and actually has intelligence. Cell Max then flies to the surface. By this point, the Gammas realised they were being manipulated and stopped fighting. So now, Orange Piccolo, Gohan, the Gammas, and Vegeta 
all watched Selmax emerge, and Vegeta smirks, telling the others to step aside. It's his turn for some fun. Selmax looks down at his hands, gazing at the perfection which is himself. Vegeta then flies in front of him, asking if he is the same Cell they have fought before. Selmax says no. Unlike the previous version of himself they encountered, he actually is perfection. Vegeta laughs, saying they'll see about that, but at the very least, he should be a good test for his new power. Selmax tells Vegeta that he already has knowledge of Vegeta's blue transformations, but this just makes Vegeta grin. It's fortunate Vegeta only gained this power recently, otherwise, Selmax would probably have data on it. Vegeta then powers up, transforming into Super Saiyan 4. This transformation isn't even as strong as Super Saiyan God, but this is just a warm up to gauge the power of Cell Max. The two then clash, both of them gauging the strength of the other, and Cell Max is using this chance to understand how much power not only Vegeta has, but how much power he himself has. However, it seems Vegeta's transformation isn't even comparable to those blue ones he has data on, so. This won't be a challenge at all. The two then break away from each other. Selmax saying he'll give Vegeta one chance to power up. Otherwise, he won't waste his time and he'll just kill him here and now. Vegeta begins laughing as a red aura begins surging around him. Vegeta saying very well as he imbues Super Saiyan 4 with godly ki. Vegeta finishes his transformation and he now hovers there in Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4. He was able to combine his Saiyan power with that of the gods. Cell mockingly claps, saying impressive. From his data, Vegeta seems to be even stronger than any warrior seen on Earth. However, he's still no match for himself. Vegeta says they'll see about that, blitzing towards Cell Max, and they begin to clash once again. This time Cell Max needing to use more power, as Vegeta actually pushes him in that suppressed state. However, once Cell Max does exert more power, Vegeta is clearly outmatched, leading to Piccolo, Gohan and the two Gammas joining in the fight. Vegeta being annoyed by this, but at this point, he knows Cell Max is too big of a threat to be taken lightly. Vegeta and Piccolo take charge in the fight, Gohan and the Gammas playing a support role. However, Cell is getting bored of this game, so he decides he'll take them out one by one, starting with Piccolo. Cell bursts his aura, sending everyone flying, and he then dashes towards Piccolo, punching a hole straight in his chest, and Piccolo coughs out blood as he begins falling out of the sky. Cell Max is then about to go after Vegeta, but the entire planet begins to shake. Cell looking over to Gohan, who is snapped at the sight of Piccolo being killed. As this is happening, Kakarot and Broly just finish their sparring match, and once they are no longer focused on the sparring match, Everyone there immediately senses what is going on on Earth. They sense so many strong powers, something has to be going on. Kakarot tells Goku and Broly to grab on, he'll Kai Kai them there, but Beerus and Whis also say they want to join them as well. It will be interesting to watch what is going on. So, Kakarot Kai Kai's them all to the battlefield, seeing Gohan now awakened in his beast transformation and Vegeta in Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4 leading the charge against Cell Max, with the two Gammas giving them support. Cell Max then senses the arrival of the others, quickly smacking away Gohan and Vegeta, and flying down to where they just arrived. Cell Max then smirks. Finally, he got their attention. Now, he can unleash his full power with some worthy opponents. Without saying a word, Kakarot and Goku both transform. Goku to perfected Ultra Instinct, and Kakarot to Ultra Ego. However, they aren't the only ones to transform. Broly transforms into Super Saiyan, this time being in a controlled state. It took him some time, but he was able to achieve this through his training on Virus's planet. Cell Max then unleashes his full power, flying up as Vegeta and Gohan rush him from behind, and Goku, Kakarot and Broly rush at him from in front. Cell Max taking them all on at once, and although he is struggling, he clearly has the edge. Cell knows that eventually he'll be overwhelmed, so like he tried to earlier, he needs to take them out one by one. He knows he can't take Kakarot out first, since from his data, he doesn't know Kakarot is immortal, but at the very least, he can regenerate. Cell is having trouble deciding which one to take on. 
They are surprisingly all very close in power to one another. However, he decides to try kill Broly first, knowing he grows fast in power, so he could become a problem. So, he begins focusing his attacks on Broly, and even though it's difficult, he's able to eventually knock Broly out, then quickly jumping back to catch his breath, and the four Saiyans left need to come up with a plan. Even with Broly, they were losing, so now he's gone, they need to figure out something fast. They could just let Kakarot take on Cell one on one, with all the damage he'd take, and then heal, he could probably catch up to Cell Max, but that's risky. They don't know if Cell has any of their techniques or not, like the original Cell, because if he does, then he might have some sealing techniques. Goku then says they can do the fusion dance, and Vegeta refuses, saying he won't resort to fusing again. Kakarot says that's fine, both him and Goku know the fusion dance and can fuse with each other. They just need Vegeta and Gohan to hold off Cell Max. Vegeta says fine, and Gohan agrees, both of them rushing towards Cell and doing their best to take him on. Cell being able to hold them off, but he's confused. Where are Goku and Kakarot? Cell then sees the pair in the distance. They are up to something. Cell then kicks Vegeta and Gohan away, beginning to fly towards Kakarot and Goku, but Vegeta quickly recovers, flying in front of Cell and punching him in the face knocking him back, and Gohan then flies behind Cell, putting him in a full Nelson. Kakarot and Goku then begin doing the fusion dance, and Cell throws Gohan off of him, straight into Vegeta, but Vegeta catches him, the pair then rushing at Cell to hold him back just a little bit longer, but Cell knows he has to stop Kakarot and Goku from doing whatever they are about to do. Cell slams Gohan into the ground, and throws a punch at Vegeta, but Vegeta catches the punch, his eyes glowing a dark blue, as he does this, seemingly harnessing a power which he can't yet fully activate. But Cell then grabs Vegeta's arm, throwing him in the distance, but when he looks down to Kakarot and Goku, it's too late. They completed the fusion dance, and now, Merged Goku is born. Merged Goku then looks to Cell, glaring at him as he begins to power up. One of his eyes turns silver, while the other turns purple, as he attempts to harness both Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego at the same time. He can't fully utilise either of them, but he can maintain this Omen combined state for a short period, and that's all he'll need to deal with Cell. Merged Goku, Kai Kai's in front of Cell Max, instantly throwing a flurry of attacks, which Cell can't even react to. Cell then starts flying away, throwing a flurry of key blasts at Merged Goku, but Merged Goku dodges half of them and tanks the rest. Merge Goku then chasing after Cell, and quickly catching up to him. Cell trying to throw a punch at Merge Goku, but he catches it, then outstretching his other arm, and ending Cell, the same way Kakarot ended Cooler, with a Hakai. <laughs> Completely erasing the threat to the universe. Moments later, Merged Goku splits back into Kakarot and Goku. That power was very draining, so the fusion couldn't last long. The pair then look around for the others, seeing Vegeta carrying Gohan and Broly, and the two Gammas carrying Piccolo, who was barely able to survive. Everyone then reverts to their base states, Pan running over and hugging Gohan, and Beerus yawns, saying that was certainly entertaining, but it's all over now. However, now he wonders which one of them is actually the strongest. Vegeta steps up, saying it's clearly him, but Gohan says he doesn't know. He might be a bit stronger than Vegeta. Goku would then scratch his head, saying he knows one way they can find out, and they all head to Beerus' planet, Pan even coming along to watch as we get a free-for-all between Orange Piccolo, Super Saiyan Broly, Beast Gohan, Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Perfected Ultra Instinct Goku, and Ultra Ego Kakarot. But I'll let you guys comment down below who you think wins that free-for-all. Once that is over, Gohan, Piccolo, and Pan return to Earth. Vegeta deciding to train on Burris' planet once more, as he felt like he nearly awakened something against Cell, and he believes Training more on Beerus' planet will help him reach it. A lot of time passes, Kakarot training with Beerus, and finally, Beerus says that's it. Kakarot asking what Beerus means, and Beerus says that he's finally taught Kakarot 
everything he can. He knows Goku never wanted this position, but Kakarot is different due to his experiences. So, he offers Kakarot the position of the God of Destruction. He can spend the rest of his days helping the universe by taking out any threat to it, preventing anyone else from suffering like he has. Kakarot has to think about it, but he does end up accepting the position. And so, Whis taps his staff, giving Kakarot his new outfit, and he instructs Kakarot that to start his training as a new god of destruction, he wants Kakarot to maintain his ultra ego state until he can do it permanently. And Kakarot agrees, ready for the challenge and ready to fulfill his duties to the best of his ability. He won't be sleeping all the time like Beerus. But we are going to end this series here, as I think this is a good place to end off this story. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and this series as a whole. And if you did, then make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you enjoyed and any other series you would like to see me do. I want to give a huge shout out to the channel members. I appreciate you guys so much for the support and I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye guys.